Um, and I first start with uh, Pope Francis and Laudato Si, um, where he says, there is an urgent need to develop policies so that in the next few years, the emission of carbon dioxide and other highly polluting gases can be drastically reduced. This is a fundamental goal for all climate advocates. It is a necessary condition to avert climate catastrophe and to ensure a thriving future for ourselves, for generations unborn, and for our common home. Um, there are also tremendous policy, tremendous policy transformations, positive transformations happening across our society today that recognize the uplift and of the sanctity and dignity of every human person commensurate with the greatest commandment. And I mentioned, for example, gender equity, racial equity, structural racism, environmental injustice, greater corporate accountability to our climate. These all are happening today. Um, and as we move forward in society, it's not an either or, but it's a both and. And I would propose that a price on carbon needs to be one of the first ands. Um, and so in a way I feel that as well, that we do need a cornerstone. A price on carbon is the cornerstone that will allow all of the transformation of our society to move forward and for us to have a thriving future, especially for the generations on board, unborn. So that's why I think Bishop McElroy considers this, as he said in his uh, speech, uh, an action of faith, an action of the gospel. And it's also why the Catholic Climate Covenant supports a price on carbon pollution and also the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. And we do so seeking bipartisan support for this bill. Uh, and in, in my estimation, a price on carbon is to care for our common home. There is one way of characterizing um, this kind of legislation as a market-based solution, but I would argue it's actually a prudent solution. So for me, it's not per se a market-based or a, a capitalist scheme to, to address climate change. It is a prudent act to care for our common home. Second, carbon pricing legislation, such as the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act, provides a monetary benefit to our families, friends and neighbors with lower incomes, and therefore addresses the call, Christian call to care for those um, who are poorer than ourselves. The bill itself finds that 96% of households in the lowest quintile benefit from the dividend and 85% of the se second lowest quintile. So this is not perfect, but it does address a lot of the concerns of whether or not uh, a price on carbon is progressive or regressive. Um, and many of those who are of lower incomes actually come out better off. Third, on the ground implementation of, of the carbon pricing is simpler, faster, and more effective in driving down national and global greenhouse gas, gas emissions relative to many of the other solutions, thus meeting the call in Laudato C for immediate and dramatic reductions. If you compare this with other strategies, for example, let's talk about divestment, which is investors pooling their money out of publicly held uh, fossil fuel companies. Nationally owned companies are relatively immune to divestment as they're uh, solely or principally owned by their nations, not shareholders. For example, Aramco is 98% or more shared uh, held by uh, the Saudi Arabian government. We also know that nationally owned companies, oil companies control 75% of the world's crude oil production. And according to the IMF, 25, 25 nations at least are dependent on their national oil companies as they collect the equivalent of 20% or more of government revenues. So when we're talking about uh, divestment, in a way, it could be missing 75% of the world's crude oil production. And we haven't even talked yet about nationally owned uh, coal and natural gas companies. But so I quote Pope Francis again in Laudato Si, and I saw part of that quote um, in this conference. The urgent challenge to protect our common home includes a concern to bring the whole human family together 
to seek a sustainable and integral development. For we know that things can change. The creator does not abandon us. He never forsakes his loving plan or repents of having created us. Humanity still has the ability to work together in building our common home. In 1970, Blessed Pope Paul VI spoke about the potential for, quote, an ecological catastrophe under the effective explosion of industrial civilization. And he stressed the urgent need for a radical change in the conduct of humanity. He said, quote, the most extraordinary scientific advances, the most amazing technical abilities, the most astonishing economic growth, unless they are accompanied by authentic social and moral progress, and all of these things will definitely turn against man, unquote. So today we find ourselves humanity as a technological and economic giant, but a moral infant. To meet blessed Pope Paul VI call for a radical change in the conduct of humanity, of authentic social and moral progress, we must live our Catholic faith ever more fully with unprecedented love and spirit within ourselves and towards our neighbor, neighbors and into the world. Through our practices, through God, we can heal divisions and bring about the climate solutions humanity and the earth need. So we ask humbly for God in shared fellowship, for those principles of love, grace, and mercy, for his consolation, strength, and salvation, so that we may go forth into the world with joy and courage. And then in our encounter with others, including our enemies, we can seek and cultivate dialogue, understanding, forgiveness, repentance, reconciliation, redemption, and fellowship. For our adversaries are like us in the image and likeness of God. So if we allow the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts, the Holy Spirit shall renew the face of the earth. Thank you.